welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Thomas Kinsella. It's called Mirror in February, which seemed like the right poem to read for obvious reasons, I think. Kinsella is an Irish poet, translator, and editor who was born in 1928 and is still alive today. So here is Mirror in February. The day dawns with scent of must and rain, of opened soil, dark trees, dry bedroom air. Under the fading lamp, half-dressed, my brain idling on some compulsive fantasy, I towel my shaven jaw and stop and stare, riveted by a dark, exhausted eye, a dry, down-turning mouth. It seems again that it is time to learn in this untiring, crumbling place of growth to which, for the time being, I return. Now plainly, in the mirror of my soul, I read that I have looked my last on youth and little more, for they are not made whole that reach the age of Christ. Below my window the awakening trees, hacked clean for better bearing, stand defaced, suffering their brute necessities. And how should the flesh not quail that span, for span is mutilated more? In slow distaste I fold my towel with what grace I can, not young and not renewable but man. So here's my question for you, those of you who are listening to this podcast. Do you find this a depressing poem? (laughs) It's funny how many poems and how many stories and how many um, works of art that are related to February are considered depressing. Those of us who are teachers know that February is, despite being the shortest month, actually the longest month. Um, It's when the the doldrums set in, and it takes a lot of persistence to to keep going. I suspect this is true for most people in general as they're enduring the ongoing onslaught of winter, each of us to varying degrees, depending on where we live. But many people, when they read this poem, find it depressing. It's about the passing away of youth, obviously. But I'm really taken by those last few lines. In slow distaste, I fold my towel with what grace I can. Not young and not renewable, but man. In the book The Making of a Poem, a Norton Anthology of Poetic Forms, this poem is actually included in a section meant to explore the elegy. It gives a number of different poems. It talks about how an elegy is a lament. Quote, it sets out the circumstances and character of a loss. It mourns for a dead person, lists his or her virtues, and seeks consolation beyond the momentary event. End quote. And then it continues a little bit later. The elegy is a crucial formal link with the history and tradition of public poetry, serving notice that there was once a past where the corridor between the public utterance of poetry and cultural assumptions was both charged and narrow. And then again later, in the traditional elegy, the grief the poet expresses is rarely a private one. More often, it is a cultural grief. The lamented and lost subject of an elegy is shown to be possessed of social virtues. And then again later, the elegy speaks to this. It locates the cultural customs of death in whichever society it occurs, adds greatly to its power. The best elegies will always be sites of struggle between custom and decorum on the one hand, and private feeling on the other. So this is a poem that is about a passing away, a passing away of of youth, of the poet's youth. And the images are quite consistent in that. We've got dark trees, dry bedroom air, open soil, a fading lamp. A dark, exhausted eye, the downturning mouth, a crumbling place of growth, the trees which stand defaced. So all these images are consistent with that theme, and yet we get these trees, which despite being hacked off for growth, have been hacked clean for better bearing. The cutting of the limbs allows them to bear more later. And that brings us back to what is the second stanza, the beginning of the second stanza. It seems again that it is time to learn in this untiring, crumbling place of growth to which for the time being I return. And my question is, what does this line mean? It seems again that it is time to learn. It's not entirely clear to me what it is the poet is saying he needs to learn. He says, It is time to learn in this untiring, crumbling place of growth to which, for the time being, I return. End stop. There's a period there. Now plainly in the mirror of my soul, I read that I have looked my last on youth and little more. So is he learning that his youth is gone? He's looked his last on youth? 
what is it that he's learned that he that he needs to learn? This is a question that I feel like I could go on and on and on about it, and I don't have an answer for that. I, I, I think we could go around in circles and discuss that and really explore that really deeply. Something that maybe you'll think about as you listen to it again and think about this poem today, if you do. But then at the end of the poem, he says, in slow distaste, I fold my towel with what grace I can. He's going to fold his towel despite the distaste for what he's thinking about, despite the recognition that his youth is gone, despite the distaste for what he's seeing in the mirror. Yet even then, he's going to fold the towel with what grace he can, not young, not renewable. He's no longer young, he's no longer renewable, but he is man. So that final line there, I'm not going to say what I think for now, but I'm curious whether you think that this is a happy poem, a hopeful poem, or a depressing sort of forlorn poem. You can let me know on social media or Twitter if you want. Um, But uh, the open-endedness of some of the questions in this poem is what I really like about it. So here one more time is Thomas Kinsella's Mirror in February. The day dawns with scent of must and rain, of open soil, dark trees, dry bedroom air. Under the fading lamp, half-dressed, my brain idling on some compulsive fantasy, I towel my shaven jaw and stop and stare, riveted by a dark, exhausted eye, a dry, downturning mouth. It seems again that it is time to learn, in this untiring, crumbling place of growth to which, for the time being, I return. Now plainly, in the mirror of my soul, I read that I have looked my last on youth and little more, for they are not made whole that reach the age of Christ. Below my window, the awakening trees, hacked clean for better bearing, stand defaced, suffering their brute necessities. And how should the flesh not quail that span for span is mutilated more? In slow distaste, I fold my towel with what grace I can, not young and not renewable, but man. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another one.